So most of the time I don't do the practice problems with you guys, uh, but I thought I do question two with you. So that way you guys get to see an example of how the project is done for part two of the project. So essentially for question two, that is for your practice problem, I encourage you to uh, start your project by choosing a polynomial for your project. So if you go back to the project rubric, there are four equations you can choose from, and you're gonna choose one of them, and then you're gonna solve it in three ways, graphing, grouping, and synthetic division. Now at this point, you have learned all the methods for solving. So what I'll do here is choose an example to use. Now the, this one here is one that I've made up, so it's not from your rubric. I'm just using one that will be a good demonstration. So that way you guys have something to look at and see how you would do your project. So essentially what you have to do for graphing is you have to tell me the degree of the function, which is the highest power. So in this case, my highest power is three. So that's already completed. My leading coefficient. Well, the leading coefficient is always the number in front of the highest power. So my leading coefficient is a one. It says X to the third power has a one in front. The real uh, number of real solutions and number of imaginary solutions, the only way I can figure out the number of solutions is if I look at the graph. And so I know the total number of solutions should be three. So I have to use Desmos to graph this equation um, and then find out. So you'll have to uh, use Desmos, which I'll show you here in a moment, but I'm gonna start sketching a graph here. So I'm gonna open up my camera to show you how you would type this into Desmos. So um, what I do is I just took my equation and I just typed this in. Um, just as a quick reminder, if you are typing this in and you want an exponent, all you have to do is hit shift and then six, and that's how you get the caret, and then that's how you get exponent. So I just literally typed the equation in. Now you don't want to type it in with the uh, equals zero, just, just the equation. And then what you're gonna do is zoom in and out to see where it hits the x-axis. So I'm gonna just zoom out to get a clearer picture of what this looks like. So it looks like the end behavior, this side's pointing down and then this side's pointing up and it kind of makes like this wave, but I only see one spot that it hits at. So I'm gonna zoom in to that particular spot. Ooh, that's zooming out, so zooming in. Looks like it hits it right there at x equals negative nine. So I'm gonna pause the video there. So it looks like I have one real solution so I have one real solution. That means two of my solutions, if I subtract three, uh, if I take three and subtract it from one, I get two left over. So I have two imaginary solutions. So on the graph, this is what I saw. And you have to draw, draw like a quick sketch of your, um, your graph or your equation. So I took this equation, graphed it, and this is what I saw. It kind of made this like wave where it um, went I think it was down first. Let me draw, use a different pen here. There we go. So it was end behavior down and then it went back up like that. That's kind of a rough sketch, but this is kind of what my graph looked like. And so you're just gonna do a rough sketch of what your graph looks like. And basically this just helps figure out um, how many times does it cross the X axis. And in this case, there's only uh, one time, so one real solution, and then two imaginary. So the end behavior for me was left is down, as you can see, and then right is up. So that's why you want to sketch the graph so you can remember uh, which direction is which. And that's it, that is graphing. So I'm done with graphing. That only took me like not even five minutes to complete. Um, for factoring by grouping, so what you're gonna do is take your equation and you have four terms in your equation, or you should have four terms if you choose from the rubric. So um, I have here four terms, and this is a cubic, so I could try grouping and see if it works, and it should for this case. Um, so you would group up the first two, and um, you would try to factor now. So basically, for the first one here, I kinda wanna tie in what we did in the beginning. So this one here, I'm narrowing down what my solutions are. I can see that on the graph, X is gonna be equal to negative nine, but that was the only real solution that I found. Um, in the next one here for factoring by grouping, I'm using algebra skills. So I, I'm not relying on my image anymore. I can actually find my solution if I try factoring. 
So let's see if we actually get further with factoring. So I'm going to factor out x squared because that's my lowest power. At least we with x plus 9. And then this one here, this is a 4 and a 36, so I can at least factor out 4. That would leave behind, let's see, 36 divided by 4 is a 9 that's left behind. So both of these have x plus 9, so I can factor that out, which leaves behind an x squared and a positive 4. So x squared plus 4, set this equal to 0. And so I already noticed that when I set my factors equal to 0, this side here, if I subtract by 9, this would cancel, and x is equal to negative 9. This side here, if I subtract by 4, this is going to be a negative 4, but then I have to take a square root to get rid of the power or the square. Square root of negative 4 is going to be a plus and minus. Square root of 4 is 2, but I need an i because there is a negative number. And remember, there was two imaginary numbers, and I just found them. So this negative 9 proves that I did see uh, um, the graph cross at negative 9. So I can see that my solution is going to be x equals negative 9, positive 2i, and negative 2i. And now I found my three solutions. So that is showing how to prove and find x using grouping. And then the last method is trying to use synthetic division. And the first thing you have to do is list out all the possible real solution. The reason why I want you to do this is to see if the one that you found on the graph, x equals negative 9, does it show up on your list? Okay, so um, let me bring down my equation again because I've seemed to have forgotten it. So my equation was x to the third, 9x squared plus 4x plus 3, 36. So... If I were to find my possible possible zeros or my possible uh, roots here, I would have to take my constant. So remember the plus and minus in front. My constant here is 36 and my leading coefficient is 1. So factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 will work. Um, looks like 9 would work. 10, no, not 10, 12 would work, and 18 would work, and 36. So that is my list. And then my leading coefficient is 1. And so from here, I could just divide all these numbers by 1. So I'd have a very large list here. And so what I notice is that as I'm making this list, my list does have a... 9 in it, right, has a plus and minus 9 right here. And so this kind of reveals to me like, okay, so this one is possible to get on the graph. Um, all right, so I made my list. So you definitely want to show that you can find, uh, make a list for all possible zeros. And then the next thing you want to do is use synthetic division. So because we already checked the graph, the real root that we found, real root, was x equals negative 9. So that one actually crossed the x-axis. So you're going to use your graphing to help you out with synthetic division. So we found x equals negative 9, and our list confirms it. Our, our possible list confirms that negative 9 is possible to get. Um, and then we're going to start making our box. So negative 9 goes in. I'm going to label constant. And then put my numbers underneath. So I have a 1, a 9, a 4, and a 36. I'm going to pull down the first number. And then start using synthetic division. So from here, I'm just not going to explain this part because it's a little bit redundant. We've done synthetic division multiple times now. So this becomes 4. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. So my remainder is 0. So this is my constant, my x, and my x squared. So from here, it looks like my equation ends up being... Uh, 1x squared plus 4, because I have a 1x squared, the 0 is for x to the first, so I don't have x to the first, and then 4 is the constant. So this is all I'm left, which is great, because I can just set this equal to 0 and then solve, um, because I need to find the last two uh, solutions. So I found this solution, but remember, this is x to the third power, so I have two more solutions, and I'm using synthetic division to prove, um, so I can't use what I did before for grouping. So I'm going to subtract 4 over to try to get x 
squared by itself, and then I'm going to take a square root. That will cancel, so x comes down, and the square root of negative 4 is, again, plus and minus 2i. And so it looks like my real solution was x equals x equals negative 9, and then the one that I solved using synthetic gave me positive 2i and negative 2i, my three solutions. And ta-da, I just found my answer again. So this one I used synthetic division, and this one I used grouping, and graphing only gets you the real solutions. So grouping and synthetic division actually help you find all the solutions, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for your project. So hopefully this is a good example to look at if you are trying to figure out how to do part two of the project. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your teacher. Bye guys.